Let's think about a company that outsources its production to a low cost but distant supplier. We know that there are some negative consequences to that outsourcing. Supply risk, communication problems, maybe there's a risk of losing intellectual property, and it's not good for innovation to have manufacturing and R&D separated. But in the face of the cost differential that's offered by this distant supplier, uh, companies typically feel that they just don't have an option, uh, that it is not possible to profitably manufacture close to the local market. Now, managers and policymakers are painfully aware of the cost of extending the supply chain. In fact, the policymakers are watching uh, economic regions be devastated by the loss of manufacturing. Uh, but they still throw up their hands in despair, saying, you know, if we make this locally, either the company's going to lose money or we're going to have to have government subsidies. And neither of these are acceptable or attractive options. Our focus today is on the mismatch cost that comes from the fact that when we outsource to the distant supplier, we have to make the decision a long time before we know what demand exactly is. OpLab, which is a laboratory at the University of Lausanne, has developed a tool based on quantitative finance that lets us ask the question, how much cheaper does the distant, long lead time supplier have to be to compensate for the fact that we have to place the order a long time before knowing that demand? Uh, so we're going to think about a manufacturer that's close to the market, that's also close to R&D, which is nice, and that is fast enough to allow production to take place after we know exactly what demand is going to be. Let's compare that local supplier with a distant supplier that is going to offer a quite compelling 15% cost reduction. We have to place our order 10 weeks before demand is known, and uh, we're going to work with weekly demand. Let's assume that this product sells for $100. The local manufacturer produces it for $44. Remember that the distant supplier is 15% cheaper, so around $38. If we don't sell the product during the selling season, we can get a salvage value of $20. So let's put those values in the tool. Now, the next thing we've got to think about is how much variation there's going to be in demand 10 weeks in advance. We can use our intuition to get a pretty good idea of how much variation there's going to be. So first, we're going to imagine a demand level that is right in the middle. So there's a, if this is our demand level in the middle, there's a 50% chance that demand is going to be higher, and there's a 50% chance that demand is going to be lower than this value in a given week. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to get a sense of over 52 weeks of demand, what is the highest that we expect that demand could go. So let's assume that over those 52 weeks, our intuition is that for that peak week, demand could be twice this middle value. With that peak and that middle value, we can get a surprisingly good idea of how much variation there's going to be. That is what the volatility parameter of demand will be. With this example where our intuition is that the peak is twice the middle value over 52 weeks, we estimate that the volatility parameter is going to be around 34%. Uh, which is going to correspond to a coefficient of variation of 35%. So let's put that into the tool. And what we are going to see is that that 15% is not good enough, that 
with this quite modest level of volatility, if the cost differential isn't at least 18 percent, we're going to lose money because the mismatch cost is going to be greater than the cost differential. Now, let's consider somewhat higher volatility. Still fairly modest, but a bit higher, like a fashion product. Let's suppose that our middle value would be something like 100. Uh, so that on a given week, there's a 50% chance that demand would be less than 100, 50% chance that demand would be greater than 100. But let's suppose that over 52 weeks, we expect that there would be a week that would go as high as 400, so four times the middle value. That would give us a volatility parameter of 70%, coefficient of variation of 80%. Let's put that into the tool. What we observe is that now 15% is not even close, that the required cost differential is well above 30%. Let's take it a step further. Let's suppose that we realize that we've been a little bit too optimistic about that salvage value. We thought we could get $20, but actually we're lucky if we get 10. So we put $10 into the tool. What we see is that now the required cost differential is well over 40%. So the volatility that we're describing here is quite modest. Uh, this is lower than what we usually observe when we work with companies. Uh, we have been working with companies that come in with a volatility that is over 100% uh, and that also can have other types of shocks. So this is really a base case. Now, when we talk to these companies, they say, uh, yes, we do uh, have some demand volatility exposure, but we're going to get rid of it via forecasting. This doesn't work. Uh, the um, cases that we've seen here with the cost differential that ranges from 18% to well over 40% in order to just break even with the mismatch cost assumes ideal forecasting. In the real world, forecasting usually is not going to do as well as what we have seen here. It's also important to keep in mind that we are only looking at mismatch costs. We haven't even touched the things that you see in the press, the supply risk. Uh, we had a container that got stuck at customs uh, for six months, and we missed the entire season. The loss of intellectual property, the good news is it's being made well. The bad news is we've completely lost the business because our intellectual property is gone. Uh, loss of innovation. You know, back in the days when manufacturing was close to R&D, people talked to each other. Now, they're separated by seven time zones, nine time zones. They don't talk to each other anymore. As a result, the manufacturing is taking place far away, and it's no longer reflected in innovation. We haven't looked at any of these. All that we have looked at is the fact that when we have to make the decision about exactly what we're going to produce, several weeks in advance, we work with less good information. These mismatch costs are very high. Managers are typically amazed in companies that we work with by how much money is being left on the table. So when we take these mismatch costs, the nice thing is that the tool gives managers some money to play with. They come in and they say, oh, now we understand that we're leaving $2 million on the table from the fact that we have too much or we don't have enough. With that money, it becomes often possible to justify producing close to local demand. And by the way, we then get those strategic benefits of keeping our intellectual property, keeping our innovation, creating jobs locally, taking care of our communities, and uh, avoiding supply risk.